Hi, I'm Ryan, and I'm here to help figure this beast of a keyboard out, this Nord Stage 2. Here we go. It's broken up into four sections. We've got the organ section, the piano section, the synth section, the external section, don't worry about that one, and the effects section. I'm okay to say don't worry about the external section, right? Because they shouldn't. Don't ever. It's kind of, yeah. So let's start with the organ section. Let's clean this up a little bit. Great. So on each of these four sections, you'll see a big knob in the top left. And that's your volume for that specific section. And right under that volume knob is a button that turns on that section. So right now, we've got the organ section turned on, and all of the others are off, as indicated by the lights underneath the volume knob on each. The organ has all of these draw bars. If you don't know what the draw bars do, uh, let me demonstrate. Uh, we'll start with this one. This is your fundamental, as indicated by fund underneath. That is your fundamental harmonic of the note you're playing. So right now all we're hearing is that C. As we pull more of these draw bars out, that's the lingo, we get more harmonics in the series. And these two below are below this note. So with that information, you can shape the sound a little bit. So if you, you can kind of literally draw, and you know, if you make a shape like this, it's going to have a lot of high end, a lot of low end, and you know, a, a varying amount in the middle. And you can do the opposite which is going to have a lot of middle and not a lot of high or low. To start with, though, this is a very common setting. But it sounds kind of low. We're at, right now we're on middle C, and since this is the fundamental and two subharmonics, it's, it's kind of a lower, muddier sound. So if we're going to use this setting, we kind of need to err on this, the higher end of the keyboard. Now that's kind of a boring sound all by itself, isn't it? No offense to the makers of Hammond. That sound is fine by itself. But we can make it better. Next to the organ section is a rotary speaker section. This is commonly referred to as a Leslie. If we turn this on with this button, uh, it now, we have a little bit more motion to it. A Leslie speaker is a speaker in a cabinet that spins and right now it's spinning slowly, and this button makes it spin faster. So that's a common technique when playing organ to add interest to what you are playing and make it sound like you are playing something cooler than you are. I'm just holding this octave up here, and it sounds like I'm doing a lot more. Is this keyboard mapped with the sustain pedal, you think? It still is. Hey. So if you don't want to push the button, this particular keyboard is also mapped to the sustain pedal Leslie speed function. So as I'm holding the pedal, it goes fast. And when I let off the pedal, it goes slow again. So in addition to the draw bars and the Leslie, uh, there's also a little bit of drive above the Leslie. This knob right here will add some overdrive as you turn it. I don't use a ton of that personally. I, I tend to go about two to three just for a little bit of drive. Otherwise, I mean, you can do more if Chad lets you. But... Uh, that's the overdrive, simple. Uh, here are some different organ models. The B3 is the most common one, but also there's Bach's and Farfisa. Or is it Farfisa? 
I don't know. There's just one organ model. It's B3. <laughs> they sound different. Yeah, I mean, you'd probably recognize the sounds. But you're probably not going to use them. Leave it on B3 with the Leslie turned on. Vibrato and chorus add a little more interest to the sound. Um, they're optional. Uh, turn it on with that button. Let's turn the Leslie off for a little bit of clarity. So this is, this is with nothing turned on. We'll turn on the vibrato chorus button. And it's a similar kind of effect as the Leslie speaker, but a little different. So there's six different settings. This is chorus three, vibrato one, chorus one, vibrato two, chorus two, vibrato three, and chorus three. I tend to not use these very much, but they're an option. I usually just stick with the Leslie. Then there's percussion. You may or may not use this as well, but we'll talk about it. Turn it on with this button. It adds a little bit of percussion to the front of the sound, the very beginning when you press the key. And these are a few different settings available to change that a little bit. So the volume soft on means it's that that percussion on the front is a little bit softer than it can be. If we turn that off, it's a little louder now. The decay is just how fast that percussion falls away, so it's on fast right now. Slow. Fast. Just disappears a little faster. And the harmonic is currently set to third, and if it's off, it's set to second. So this is the third harmonic. Second. Third. So really, that's most effective when you're playing a lot of like melodic things. The percussion in general is most effective like that because um, it allows you to kind of cut through a little harder, but it's really mostly used in jazz and I don't use it in church much, if ever. That's all the organ controls. So applying all of this organ stuff, um, some things to know about the organ itself. This is modeled after, you know, vintage Hammond B3 organs, and they have a few uh, things about them that are different than, say, a piano. Organs don't have sustain pedals because the notes just sustain forever. You just hold them down, and they last forever and ever, and it's wonderful. So that's why we can use the sustain pedal for our Leslie. organ makes a really nice pad. So you'll see as I'm playing here, some of my fingers are moving and some are staying holding. And I'm doing a lot of like finger transitioning here, keeping this D held down, for instance, so that I can move between chords without a gap in all of the notes at least. And as I'm doing it, I'm thinking about what each finger is going to do for each movement. So like right now I'm on a G2. If I want to go back to an A, I've got these fingers ready here. So this whole time I've been holding this A with my pinky because it makes a nice note up top. But you could also just, if the rest of the band is playing, you can also just hold one note with an organ and it's fine. I'm sure you've heard this in application before and maybe you didn't realize it was just one note. And it's very easy to accomplish or an octave. Say maybe the rest of the band is... instance. 
let's talk about some drawbars. Um, so with this basic setup in mind, which is three drawbars out and Leslie, we talked about how it's kind of muddy in the middle of the keyboard. So if we bring it up higher, it's a little it's a little clearer, it's a little a little nicer to mix with the rest of the band. Um, if I'm using this setting, I'm going to be mostly in the top two to three octaves of the keyboard, and probably with just one hand. If you watch other videos of people playing a real organ, their left hand is flying all around, turning the Leslie on and off, messing with draw bars. So it, it's perfectly acceptable to just play with your right hand. while you make drawbar adjustments with your left hand and hit the Leslie. So organs also have, real organs, have a volume pedal Normally they'll have notes for your feet to play as well, uh, but there's also a volume pedal so you can, uh, as they say, swell in and out. Um, let's see if you look right here on the keyboard, it says organ swell. Um, but if you don't have a volume pedal hooked up, you can easily just fade in and out with this knob right here, and that won't affect your master volume of the keyboard. So when I'm playing organ, I already said this. I very often will just be playing with my right hand only. Nice and mellow for a little bit, and then if the chorus gets really big, I can ramp up. So there's my favorite organ gimmick. I suppose a proper term might be a glissando. Some people call it a smear. Um, call it whatever you like, but it sure is fun. Uh, mash the bottom part of the keyboard and slide up to whatever chord you're going to. And it's easiest if you land on that chord with your right hand and smear with your left. I find it easiest. Otherwise, if you're trying to do it all with one hand, still doable, but it's a riskier game. Um, and the opposite can be done when you're at the end of a song. Got some reverb on there. Um, that's, that's great for making big entrances and exits with an organ. Like maybe you're playing a nice piano for the verse or something of a song when the chorus comes in. You can really land on it. Uh, it's, a, it's attention grabbing and it makes you sound awesome and it's really easy to do. Um, I'm doing it with my palm. Some people will do it with a thumb. I've seen some people use their index finger, but that's kind of painful. So the organ has a incredible dynamic range between all of the draw bars and you know the ability to just turn the volume up and down. Um, you can really, really get a wide array of sounds available. So um, another really common setting that I like to use is just the third drawbar, how we started. It's nice and pure. And you'll notice we, can, we have the ability to play a little bit lower on the keyboard itself because it's not so muddy without those lower drawbars. So this makes for a really good setting maybe behind a prayer. Still get that Leslie going. And then while you're playing, you can still... <laughs> Here's a little trick. If your left hand is close enough with your pinky, you can... sparkle on top. 
And until we really pull these guys out, we're okay in this range of the keyboard. But if we... Eh, I suppose it's still fine. See there, it's a little muddy. So you can, you can... You see that I'm not having to play a lot of notes to really make it interesting and still feel like it's musical and good. Yeah, and it's really not. Organ is, is very much less is more, in my opinion, yeah. So let's move on to the piano section. We can turn off the organ how we turned it on. Note that the Leslie will stay on. And the way, here's kind of a Nord idiom. Whenever you see these three lights labeled organ, piano, and synth, that's where this thing is being applied to right now. So the Leslie is on the organ, but it can also be applied to the piano or the synth section. So that's why this is still on. It's not, it's not organ exclusive. Uh, we can change it by double tapping the gray button here, and now it's on the piano. Now it's on the synth, back to the organ. Another way to do it is hold the shift button and press it, and it'll switch. Two ways. Um, so we'll turn the Leslie off for now. Piano, turn it on. We've got a piano. Now, yeah, all right. Looks like clean, basic piano. Um, yeah, it's a piano. I don't know what else to say to start. Let's get into the controls. Uh, there are different types of the pianos, even though they're not all pianos, uh, and different models of those types. We can switch the types with this button. Right now we're on grand piano. Sounds like a grand piano. And we have a couple of different models. Steinway, Yamaha C7, CP80 electric, back to the Bosendorfer. They're pianos. They behave how you think a piano probably should behave by default. Um, there's a few modifications that can be made in terms of shifting octaves and turning off sustain pedals and things, but uh, really, that's all they are. Um, uprights, upright piano. Electric pianos, electric piano one. These are uh, essentially Fender Rhodeses. Uh, and they've got, okay, six different models in here. For playing purposes, a Fender Rhodes or an electric piano behaves like a piano. That's why they're called electric pianos. They were designed after the original thing. Um, so it's going to be a very similar playing experience, but instead of a hammer hitting a string inside a piano, uh, there's a few different things going on. And so for Fender Rhodes, is a hammer hitting a metal bell or a tine. That's why it has that sound as opposed to the sound of a piano. Really, effectively, you can play this exactly how you would play any regular piano part. It's just got a little softer sound, a little more mellow, and I tend to find they have a longer sustain, but off the top of my head, I can't remember how these compare on the Nord. But And uh, Nords, not Nords, Fender Rhodeses, uh, will have a bite if you really dig in, if you're really pushing the keys hard. So if you play nice and soft, but if you go real forte, changes the sound a little bit. So it'll react to how you dig in. So uh, be aware of your volume knob, because if you're turned down and really digging in to meet the dynamic level needed, it's going to have a, a different sound than if you turn all the way up and play softly. 
So that that range is kind of fun to explore with each different model of uh, electric piano. So as we go through them, another Fender Rhodes. They're all just a little bit different, but essentially the same instrument with some different maybe mic techniques or different you know different decade of the instrument because they've been making them for a long time. all six but they behave just like a piano more or less electric piano 2 is a uh, the first setting is a Wurlitzer which is very similar in playing experience to a piano or a Rhodes but uh, instead of strings or metal tines they are reeds it has a little bit of a softer sound than the Rhodes and it's got a shorter sustain than uh, the Rhodes or the piano. They die pretty quickly. So I wouldn't use this for a pad or something in church unless there was another sound layered with it. Um, but it's a really nice, pleasing, soft sound that I like. And it will react like the Rhodes if you dig in uh, because it's modeled after a physical harder hit on the instrument itself. Which I guess I didn't talk about with the organ. The organ does not react to how hard you press. Same volume. Clavinet. So, so the clavinet has a harder attack or a stronger attack than uh, the previous few keyboards we've talked about. Some of you may be familiar with like a harpsichord. It has a kind of a similar sound to that. You could fake it. I'm not gonna try to on camera, but um, there's four models of clavinet, A, B, C, and D, that are just different pickup patterns, um, which is probably not significant for your needs. Um, they, they just have slightly different sounds of the same thing. So, you know, if you're gonna use a clavinet, just pick your favorite. Clavinet gets used a lot down here in the low end. It's really beefy. You can sometimes simulate another like electric guitar kind of a thing with this, uh, but it's, not really a guitar. I don't use the clavinet much up here. Um, in fact, I don't know if I've ever actually used clavinet in church. That's the clavinet. Here's the harpsichord. A little older, a little twangier. We all know that sound. Probably. Um, probably not going to use this a lot in church. Unless you're playing a very specific type of church service. I don't know, do you do a lot of Baroque concerts here? We do. Oh, good. <laughs> so, with all six of these categories in mind, this, this is our piano section. That's really all we have control over uh, with, you know, with some clavinet settings and a couple of piano settings, but the defaults are 99% of the time perfect. Um, so how do I pick which of these six I'm going to use? Um, the three most common that I'm going to use are either Grand Piano or Electric Piano 1 or 2. Um, I rarely use Clavinet or Harpsichord. I occasionally use Upright if I just want that slightly more organic sound or if it's Christmas. Um, so the, the Grand Piano has the, the strongest cut through. Um, it will cut through the most in the mix with a full band. As you dig in, like that, that sound will get heard when there's a full band being played, or full band playing. Um, the, the Rhodes has a warmer sound, doesn't qu cut quite as more, so I'll use that when I want more of a pad-like sound. It's nice and warm and sustains and feels good um, 
and electric piano two is even more electric piano two is even less of an attack and less of a sustain but it's a nice warm sound so if you want your sound to die a little bit faster you can go with the electric piano two or if you want it to stay a little bit longer you go with electric piano one and if you really want it to cut use the grand piano that's really my deciding process between those three uh, when it comes to the specific models of each um, electric piano one only has one model so your decision is made there electric uh, grand piano has a couple and it really just comes down to personal preference uh, because they're all pretty similar So I, two and three in particular, four is a different electric grand with a very different sound than the rest. But um, I kind of arbitrarily just choose which piano I want to use. Sometimes I just get tired of one and switch to the next one. Full disclosure. <laughs> um, and then the electric piano, uh, there's, a f there's six different models loaded in this particular keyboard. Um, And they have a, a, quite a variety of sounds. Um, so really, I, I'll kind of classify the sound with, with two aspects, the attack and the sustain. Um, that does not have much attack, and it has a nice long sustain. That has even less attack and kind of a warmer sustain to my ear. That's got a bit more of an attack and less of a sustain. So I'm really just just defining the sound by th that kind of language in my brain. So if I'm playing a song and I'm like, oh, I want something with a little, a little stronger sustain. Okay, that's a little better. Um, I don't have these model numbers memorized. Like, I, I don't think, oh, I'm going to use electric piano 4. I, I really just have to go back to it with my ear and then remember on that song in particular, I liked Electric Piano 5 or 2 or whatever. Um, but, but I'm making those decisions based on attack and sustain for that song or even for that section of a song. <laughs> so that's, that's the piano section. So now we've got two sections, piano and organ. How can we make these work together? That's a great question. So there's a couple of different ways. There's splits and layers. Splits divides the keyboard into two or more sections. Uh, I guess the Nord can do two or three sections uh, at, at any point indicated by these lights right here along the bottom. Um, you can, those are your available split points on the keyboard. Uh, the other option is layering, where you have two sounds on top of each other. So let's start with splits. Here is uh, two buttons labeled keyboard zones. There's a two and a three. That is the number of zones you're going to have. So if we hit the two button, we now have two keyboard zones. And there's one light lit up here now. That is our split point. So right now, it's all piano still no change above or below this light until we do some other things. Uh, below the volume knob on the piano section, they, we have these three lights. And they're labeled low, up, and high. Uh, if we hold the shift key and press this button below those lights, we get different configurations of lights. Those are indicators for what section of the keyboard or what zone of the keyboard this sound is active on. So right now the piano is active on the low zone. So we got nothing above the light, but below the light. So we have our split, but we only have one sound. So if we go over to the organ section and turn that section on, all three lights are on. So the organ is now across the entire keyboard. So 
So you, you can probably hear that our, our electric piano one is still active below the light, and above the light, it's only organ. So if we want only organ above on the upper keyboard zone, we hold shift and we press this until we have those lights lit up. Now the upper zone is organ, and the lower is just our electric piano. So now we could play Our Leslie back on. And we have a split. Now there's three lights under each of these uh, because if you switch to three zones, you'll get two lights for the split points, and then uh, the indicator lights will show you which of the three zones you are in. But we'll do more of that later. Um, now for layering, if we turn off our split, both the piano section is on and the organ section is on. So for the entire keyboard, we have piano and organ. Well, in this case, we have electric piano and organ. So you can hear that the at this point, the electric piano has decayed completely, and now we're just left with the organ, which is a really nice setup. We get that attack from the electric piano, and then the organ sustains through. And we can still, with our sustain pedal, note that the sustain pedal will affect both the Leslie speed and our electric piano sound now. But it will not cause the organ to keep going. So keep that in mind when you're playing with the sustain pedal. You can still sustain that electric piano and the organ goes away when you take your hands off the keys. Now still remember, back to our organ, that if we're gonna play down here like we would a regular piano part, organ is starting to get kind of muddy down there. I have the organ volume down a little bit. So if you're going to layer it in this particular instance, I would still play up here because of that organ. Um, we could, though, take this organ and shift it up an octave. These two buttons right here below your zone selectors will shift this sound up or down an octave. So if we go up, you'll get a, uh, an indicator on the screen saying octave plus one, and that's our range and octave minus one. Um, so if we go octave plus one, now the organ is up an octave, but our piano, our electric piano, is still in the same octave. So you can hear that the organ is higher up now. Alternatively, if we go down an octave, it's muddy and gross, don't do that. Here's up one. So this is a really decent setup we've got right now. We can play in the middle of the keyboard where we're, you know, we've got our home base comfort. And our organ is effectively up here, creating that nice pad on top of our electric piano. And we can still go back to adjust our volumes independently. We can pull the organ back. Or we can back off the electric piano and have mostly organ. So now, we have our electric piano, we have our organ. Organ's up an octave, and our volumes are independent. Right now the electric piano's a little lower. So, I'm gonna bring that up, bring the organ down. So this might be really nice for like a verse of a song. But 
you might want that big organ to come in for the chorus. So one way is to just, when the chorus comes, turn it up, you know, do that whole thing. Um, but a more elegant slash easier way might be to use the mod wheel here. So how do we do that? Um, there is, I'll tell you how I do it. Um, these morph assign buttons are how you assign different controls to morph some of the sounds on the keyboard. So we want to use the wheel and we're going to double tap this button and it's flashing now. So now it's asking us what we want the wheel to do. And I want the wheel to turn up the organ. So I'm going to turn up the organ volume. And we see our indicators. That's the range of the wheel. Or that's the range that the wheel will move through. And check this out. I'm going to take the volume of the electric piano and turn it down. And so now that's actually an inverted range. And now I tap this button again to lock that in. And now when I move the wheel, you can see on the dials here, the volume knobs, that they turn with the wheel. And they're both turning at the same time. So, that, so now I, if I'm on a verse, I've got my nice electric piano, organ up an octave. And we can go to the chorus. And I can just do this real quick. to a verse or you know wherever it goes next um, so that gives you really two two very different sounds that are easily accessible that you built yourself if you followed along with this video but it's probably already programmed in here um, you can also since it's a wheel you can go halfway or you can go slow changes so if the pre-chorus builds into the chorus you can Use that to make that change slowly, or vice versa. Or set it in the middle if you, if you like that particular combination of those volumes. Now they're about even. You, know, you can really even them out if you want. So now we've got two sounds layered with our wheel being used. Um, the wheel is assignable, the pitch bend is not, pitch stick is not. Um, right now it's not being used for anything, but we'll get to that later. Um, the other things that are assignable are aftertouch and a control pedal. You're never going to have control pedals, are you? Okay. Uh, if you decide to use your own control pedal, it's the same process of double tap, tell it what you want it to do, Tap it again, and it'll be saved. Um, and then you can play with that. But the other option is aftertouch. If you don't know, aftertouch is what uh, literally, after you touch the key, you can press down more and have that affect the sound. Um, so if we double tap, um, well, what, what are we going to do? So let's disable the wheel. I'm going to shift and press wheel, and now that assignment is gone. My volumes no longer move with the wheel. Um, but we could do after touch, double tap, and turn the organ up. And press it again to lock it in. So now I'm holding a chord, and as I press harder, the organ volume changes. So you could leave it just like that for the whole song play with your electric piano and as you dig in you could also you, a lot of these th things on the keyboard are assignable particularly the things with lights so if you want to assign something else to aftertouch watch this double tap aftertouch that assignment is still there. That's still our range of volume with aftertouch. But we can also do that. 
So now when I press the aftertouch, these draw bars are going to get pulled out. So we press the aftertouch button again to lock it in. So. You can get some really tricky things going on. Now, keep in mind that on the weighted keys with everything, really managing that aftertouch is a skill to develop with your fingers and forearms and muscles and things. Uh, yeah, you can tire yourself out pretty quick if you're abusing aftertouch. <laughs> so, um, but that same draw bar assignment can also be on the, on the mod wheel. Do the same thing, double tap, pull the, pull the draw bars out, and tap it again. So now you can see the draw bars change with the wheel. Now we're back to nothing special. So as you're tweaking these mod wheel things and aftertouch things and potentially control pedal things, um, be aware that those things aren't saved until you actually store them on the keyboard, which is disabled. So you're not storing these on the keyboard, um, but they might be already stored on a preset. So if you look at these three buttons right here, when you pull up a preset, if one of them is lit up, one of these lights is lit up, then something is assigned to the mod wheel or the aftertouch. And it might take a little experimentation to figure out exactly what it is, but um, that's how you can tell that there's something assigned there. Um, so you won't be able to save these to your preset, but you might be able to use them if they're already there. Alternatively, live mode. So live mode is this button right here. Um, you can see a whole lot of stuff changes when you press live mode. And uh, normally these buttons will pull up different pr presets on the keyboard with different program banks. But live mode is kind of a different section of presets. But they're not really presets, they're just whatever you did before in live mode. So we go to live mode. Now this these are five different live mode presets represented by live one, two, three, four, five on the screen. Um, and these are perpetually being saved. Any change you make right now is always being saved to these sounds. So it's kind of like a, like a, like a scratch pad um, to just like build a sound and use it. And you might use it for that whole rehearsal or that whole service or that whole day or that week, but it's not a good forever saving because uh, if you make any changes, it's gone. You're not going to get it back. So just as an example, I'm going to switch this sample over here. If we're going to go 84. We go to this preset. We go to this preset, this preset. We leave live mode. We go different presets out here. We come back to live mode. We're still live mode 4. We go back to live, live 1. 84 is still there. It's constantly being saved. So if you're in live mode, and we'll just kind of reset things here. We just get a piano. We just got a piano in live mode. And if we want to then do what we did before and bring in an organ and set the mod wheel to turn the organ up and the piano down and do that and set a split and bring a synth up and, you know, do the things. Like, we can do all of that. And it's all saved. What does this sound like? Surprisingly not horrible. Let's back that off. We'll just, let's, let's do a real world scenario. We've got our piano. We've got our organ with a Leslie on. And the wheel is assigned to these things. We can leave live mode, go use a preset on some other song. And then maybe for the second service, come back and live mode is still there with that sound that we built for that day. And so you have five different slots to use for live mode. So I've, I've done some church services where I build a sound for song one, two, three, four, and five, and I just use the live sets, or li the live presets for uh, that whole Sunday, which you can do if you feel comfortable building all those sounds by yourself and get Chad's approval. Um, so if, if, you're, if you're 
tinkering with sounds. Live mode is a great spot to do it. Just know that um, if somebody else comes along and starts to tweak those sounds, then that's what they are now. They're constantly saved. Even if you turn the keyboard off, they're still saved. When you turn it back on, they're going to be there, just how you left them. So that's live mode and how it can be a very useful tool. So the synth section. We've got our bass, I mean, we've got our piano, we've got our organ. Now the synth section, the dreaded synth section. So there's a lot of controls here that do a lot of different things. So let's dive right in. This sound right here is not super pleasant. It is the default sound initialized sound from the Nord. You can always get yourself back to this sound by pressing shift this button with the sound in it beneath it. So if you just go crazy and you don't know what you did and you just kind of need a reset, this, that's it. Shift, sound in it, initialize. Um, so I will usually start my sound crafting uh, in the oscillator section. This button will let us choose from a whole lot of options for what our sound starts as. Right now it is this saw wave. Here's the square wave. This section is a whole bunch of samples, and we'll get into that. Here's some FM synthesis frequency modulation. Here's a wave table. And a triangle wave. So there's a lot of, a lot of different sound of choices available. Uh, this knob sends you s through different versions of each of these categories. Uh, the most, the most uh, crazy one <laughs> is the sample section. So this is all of your samples. Uh, by samples, we mean recordings of other instruments. Uh, typically. There's a few synth samples as well. Um, and as you turn this knob, the screen over here is updating, telling you what you are hearing. Uh, preset number one is three violins from a Mellotron. Just as an example of what's in here. Um, 61 contrabass. So we don't have the time to go through every single sample in here. And also the samples are changeable uh, via Nord's website. You can download other samples um, and load them in here. But there's a wide variety of things. So uh, essentially the sample section is where you're going to go if you need a sound that is not a piano or electric piano or an organ. Um, you know, if you need to, if you need strings most frequently, uh, this is where you're going to be looking. Sample section, uh, and and the strings I believe are all loaded at the beginning. So one, uh, number one is the three violins, sixteen violins, twenty-two violins. How many violins do you want? Um, full string, string ensemble, and so these are all a wide variety. So like here's number ten. <laughs> want that string sound, that's sample 10. So now, how do we use all the other controls around it to tweak it? Um, I will usually go, second step will be this frequency cutoff, frequency filter. Um, this is currently set to the be a low pass 12 filter, which low pass 12 and low pass 24 are essentially the same thing with a different curve. With a different amount of drama. So uh, as what's happening is as you're turning this knob down, it's cutting off the frequencies above this point on where the light is. So right now, you got full range. It's all the way up. Nothing is cut off. And as you dial this down, see now that frequency is not coming through, but some lower ones still are. 
really low ones. So I will just move this to taste. It will also tell you what the frequency cutoff is as you move it. Um, but for like a string pad like this, I might just dial it in to taste for the 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 song that I'm playing. If it's if it needs to be, um, it's a nice way to affect the sound without really uh, uh, just changing the volume. Because you could just do that, but you still have those high frequencies all coming through, whereas if you do that, it brings the volume down a little bit, but, but takes the harshness away. Um, so this is affecting the frequency of the filter on the sound. So this knob is affecting the frequency of the filter that the sound is being sent through. So this is the type of filter that it is being sent through. So low pass filter cuts it off from the top as you change. Uh, low pass filter, 24 dB per octave, is a little more dramatic, but they're essentially the same thing. High pass filter is the opposite. It's cutting off frequencies from the bottom up. Um, I typically just stay on the low pass filter. Uh, notch filter is uh, notching out a certain frequency as it goes. So cutting out certain frequencies um, as you sweep this around. Bandpass is the opposite. Only certain frequencies will come through. Typically, though, you're just going to leave it on low pass 12 dB per octave, which is the default, because um, it's really nice for just cutting things off from the top. And this is on a string sample, but any sample or, or synth that you have loaded here will be affected the same way. These knobs also affect the filter that we're working in. This is the resonant frequency. Um, let's see if I can get a good example. So, This knob is how much resonance that there is going to be at a specific frequency, and I believe it's that frequency. So you're never going to need that. But if your sound is sounding like that, this is what's happening. This frequency is... Uh, you know, you set wherever you're setting it, and then this is resonating that frequency a whole bunch uh, to a factor of 10. Uh, if we dial it back. We're, we're back to our semblance of strings. Now, this knob is the low frequency oscillator amount in the frequency modulation of this filter. Yes, there's a lot of things going on. Um, so this is how much the LFO affects the filter. Over here is our LFO, or low frequency oscillator. Let's go through building a pad with all these controls. So shift, sound in it. We got our that sound back. If we go to, uh, whoops, if we go to the FM category, we can get a sine wave happening. It's a nice start for a pad. We can use the frequency cutoff with the low pass filter to taste. It's kind of nice right there. We're not going to do anything with the resonance or the low frequency oscillator frequency modulation. Um, actually, we are. We are. So if we turn our LFO up, We've got a little bit of low frequency oscillation happening, but it's not affecting our sound because this is where we tell it that we want LFO to do something.
So we can hear, that's our low frequency oscillator. This is the speed. So if we leave it kind of slow, it gives, our, it gives our pad a little bit of motion. This knob tells us just how much that's going up and down. So that's a little much. So we're going to just do a little bit, make that a little slower. So now this section here is the amplitude envelope section. And what that is, is your volume, essentially. Uh, it, your volume from when you press the key to when you let off the key. Attack is the first volume, and this is time. So zero, we should hear this as soon as we press the key. If we crank it all the way up to 10, it's going to take a long time for us to hear it. Or at least a long time to get up to full volume. And it'll tell you as you turn this knob on the screen just how long it's going to take. And at 10, it's 45 seconds to get up to full volume. So we don't want that. But if we do, like, I don't know, between 3 and 4, which is, I don't know, 100 milliseconds or so, it's, it, it's, it's got a nice little approach. Decay is how much the volume drops off. Decay is how much the volume drops off after it reaches its max volume from the attack. So if we dial it back all the way to zero, what's happening is we're hearing the attack, and then the decay is so fast that it just goes away. If we bring our attack up longer, It reached its max volume and then decayed fully. So if we bring our decay up a little ways, two seconds, and our attack is around two seconds. I'm still holding the keys, but it has decayed fully. If we take the decay all the way up, it's 45 seconds. We don't need to sit and listen to that, but just know that your synth is constantly getting a little bit quieter. Now the release is what happens after you take your hands off the keys. At zero, well, let's bring our attack shorter for these purposes. As soon as you let off, the sound goes away. But if we take it up to two seconds or so, as soon as we let off, it hangs on for a couple more seconds. So I like to have a little bit of a release on my pads so that as I'm transitioning chords, there's a, just a little bit of fuzziness in between them. I might even do a little bit more and a little slower attack and maybe roll off a little more. Still got a little bit of motion in there. So it, pads is where we can get really subtle things happening to so that it's not just you know one sound holding on forever. It, it's really helpful since we're holding notes for so long in a pad typically um, to to make them interesting with all of these controls. So now with, with these settings, it's not going to really work really well to play fast. Like it, it just doesn't come through like it should because it's meant to be this held out thing.
get to the effects section, we can also add more interest there. But that's the gist of this. The modulation envelope functions similarly to the amplitude envelope. This is our volume through the key press. Um, this functions similarly with attack, decay, and release, but it's, a, it's not affecting volume, it's affecting other things, which are determined by the sound that you pull up. Um, so another thing that you can do with the synth section, there's all these controls up here. Um, we'll start on the left. Um, actually, no, I'm going to start on the right. Uh, vibrato, similar to the vibrato that we had on the organ, it gives a little more motion to the sound. So, as we turn it on, we can hear... Uh, the different settings, there's delay 1, delay 2, delay 3, that just takes longer for the vibrato to set in. And then AT is aftertouch and wheel, or WHL is wheel. So, delay 3 is even, is longer before the vibrato starts, and aftertouch is a very common one because then I'm in control of when the vibrato starts and stops. Wheel assigns that to your mod wheel without having to go through the process of double tap assign, whatever. It's just on or off. Um, so if so vibrato is a nice thing, nice option to know about, but it might not be the right sound for the song you're playing. Because um, it is kind of a very specific. Sound. I typically don't use it much in church, uh, at least not on a pad, maybe on like a synth lead thing, which we can talk a little bit about. Um, so we'll turn the vibrato off. You just got to cycle through all the lights until it's gone. Uh, unison. So unison is uh, essentially playing the same thing that you're playing multiple times. So I'm, I'm playing this F. Now if I add unison, it's adding more Fs on top of it. And so you get a little bit of that phasing between the waves happening. Two is more. Three is more. Multi is even more. So there's just a whole lot stack, yeah, stacked on top of each other. And so it gives a little more, in my opinion, it gives a little more air to the sound and a little more, a little more motion, a little more interest. I typically don't use the multi. As opposed to. It just gives it a little more. Here's three. That's the unison. Next to vibrato. Uh, glide and voice mode mono legato, this part. Um, this is gonna turn your pad into a slightly different tool. That is, uh, it's more, this is more used for like lead sounds, but um, what's happening is glide carries you from one note to the next. Um, you'll hear, you can only play one note at a time when this is enabled. It's just gonna, it's, you're only gonna hear the most recently pressed note. Um, glide, this knob is how much time it takes to go between the notes, so. Uh, legato mode and mono mode. In legato mode, it doesn't glide to the first note you press. In mono mode, it does. So mono mode, it remembers that I pressed this F last, and when I come back and press this F, it glides up to it. Sometimes that's what you want, sometimes it's not. Um, if I go back to legato, it doesn't remember that I pressed this F last. It just starts there. So then you have to play more legato to to get that glide to function. So you're probably not gonna use that, actually you're not gonna use that on
pads. That's going to be for, for, for lead sounds. Um, and probably not very often. Um, the arpeggiator, you might use, but we'll see. It's exactly what it sounds like. It arpeggiates for you. Turn it on with the gray button here. Now, you'll see as I change chords, it, it doesn't stay super consistent. And depending on the number of notes I'm pressing, we've got a nice triplet. So using an arpeggiator takes some real deliberate playing to get it right. Also, if you get off from the tempo of the song, it can be weird. Um, but we can control it, the rate here with this knob, labeled rate. Uh, and here you'll see the tempo of the arpeggiator. So if your song is at 130, it's there. Uh, but if we dial it up even farther, you get 130 colon 8. That's your eighth notes. Um, and the more notes you press, it goes through all of them. And this button determines the pattern that it goes through them all in. The pattern in which it goes through them all. Um, if we, It's going up when it's turned off, as indicated by the parentheses on the up. When there's no lights on, it just goes up through those three notes. Now it's going down. Now it's going up and down. And then there's random, and it's, which is more evident when you have more notes pressed down. This can be nice uh, for padding, but it's really tricky if you're not set to a click or having you know, tracks really locking you into that tempo. Um, it can still work, but you can also kind of, kind of blend it a little bit with like longer release. and maybe a slower attack. So it's not super evident that it's locked into a certain tempo. If you get off a little bit, it's not a, as big of a deal when it's not so clearly defined. The other option we have on the arpeggi arpeggiator is the range, which is octaves, two, three, or four. And if we press shift and press this button, it's going to enable two octaves. So now if I press one note, you're going to hear there's two different Cs happening there. And it gets more evident with three octaves and four octaves. So you can create a really interesting pad with just like a two octave range with the random order and with these settings that we dialed in. This is probably not something I would do on my own, but if the rest of the band is playing, it might make a nice vibe. be aware that when you're playing, as you change chords, you're not necessarily going to hear the note you think you're going to hear, because it's set to random, when you press those keys. So you still got to kind of have to make your chord changes at the right times and just hear what you hear. There's one more function. There's our release. There's one more function called the hold function. If you press that, turn it on, it will hold whatever notes you pressed last. So I'm not pressing the sustain pedal anymore. And the keyboard is just playing itself. And it will play those notes until I press different notes.
I will sometimes make some some trickier setups with a hold function where I'll, and we can do this, where I will split the keyboard, I'll put the synth up here, but transpose a couple octaves down with a hold function with something interesting happening like this, so where I just press one or two notes up here and then I can keep playing piano. You know, we can do that right now. So we'll split, this is still gonna keep holding. So our split point is here. Oh, we didn't talk about moving split points before, so moving split points. Uh, if you press shift, and then press the number two button on the keyboard zones, it will cycle through the lights above the keys. Hopefully you're seeing that. So I'm gonna move it all the way to the top. Uh, and if you have three splits, shift three will move the second light. So now I'm going to move the synth, holding shift, to the upper zone of the keyboard. Now I'm gonna shift the synth down two octaves and it's still holding and I'm just going to play I might shift it down another octave down three octaves and now that's still going I can enable the piano I have grand piano and I'm going to put it just on the lower section shift That's something to know. I, I arpeggiated one of those chords, and you shouldn't do that when the hold is enabled because it's only going to catch the last note. So make sure you press all the notes at the same time. So just know that you have to change both sounds at the same time, or you have to manage changing the chords for both sounds independently. Um, and when you turn off the hold function, it will stop. You could also just do turn hold back on, transpose it even lower. We're down five octaves now. You can just do root. still got a little motion to it there's things happening it's yeah and then just turn it off the hold to get it to stop um, and you can see that it held through all of that stuff that I was doing turning on the piano like that can that can uh, if you have the confidence to do it that can be done during the service um, while playing the final section on the keyboard that we worry about is the effects section all the way over here on the right um, we're gonna turn off the synth and bring back like an electric piano and talk about the effects a little bit so now there's four different effects sections in the effects section <laughs> um, we turn all of them on with these four bottom gray buttons uh, they can all be done independently and up right above the gray button is what sound section they are affecting um, so if we turn it on this one happens to be on piano already but if we wanted it on the organ we would press shift while pressing it and it will change which section it affects you can also double tap it um, so We'll put it on our piano. We've got an electric piano now. And these are the six different effects to choose from in this section for effect one. There's effect one, effect two, delay, and then this is amp simulation and equalization. Um, so now we have this ring modulator. What a great effect to start with. <laughs> uh, you're probably never going to use it, but just 
for fun, we're just going to address it. Um, I'll usually use ring, ring modulator like rate. I, I'll start with rate all the way down, which is the speed, and then the amount all the way up. And then we get a pretty regular sound. And then when we tweak the rate, but don't ever do that in church. Next effect is wah-wah. These are now affecting uh, this effect. <laughs> um, I wish I could, I should announce my A's and E's a little more. Um, rate and amount still affects the wah. Oh, know what? This wah needs a pedal. If we go to the next one, auto wah. That's the wah sound, and we can affect the rate and the amount a little bit. And as you dig in, if you play harder, it's going to change the sound of it a little bit. Uh, auto wah too, same effect, but a little bit different. Next effect is auto pan. That's going left and right. So the auto pan is uh, sending your sound left and right channels alternatively, going back and forth. And the rate makes it faster or slower, obviously. And the amount is just how dramatic that volume change is. Tremolo is very similar, but it can happen in mono. <laughs> That's the effect one. Effect two, you have some different options. Um, chorus two. Oh, we're on the synth. That was my bad. Shift, back to piano. There's our chorus. A mountain rate. Phaser. Phaser two. Flanger, Vibe, Chorus 1. So a lot of these you're probably not going to use it in a church setting. Maybe the chorus. Uh, I, I could see maybe using a phaser or a flanger on a pad in a very subtle fashion, but it's kind of a very distinct sound. Um, but chorus is great, uh, especially on an electric piano, to give it a little bit of motion, a little interest, maybe a little bit of age. <laughs> um, now, you also can have effect one and two on at the same time, so we could have a tremolo in addition to the chorus. And these knobs still affect both, but at different times. This button takes you between effect one and two, and if it were enabled, delay, uh, to change the amount, of, uh, the amount or the rate for either effect. So now the chorus is down, and the chorus is back, the tremolo is gone, back. So those are effect one and two. Delay. It makes your sound repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. The rate knob will affect it while it's going and the amount is I shouldn't have pressed that first key. The amount is how dramatically the volume shifts. Feedback gives you less instances of your delay. And we can tap tempo to set our 
or delay rate. And you'll notice when you tap tempo that the rate knob will actually update. It seems like you only need two clicks to set the rate with the tap tempo button, but I always just do four out of habit. Uh, and we turn delay off with this button down here. And we can have all effects on at the same time. And when you do, this button will change the focus of these knobs to affect effect one, effect two, or delay. The fourth section in effects is the amp simulation and the equalizer. Pretty basic, but very useful. We turn it on, we make sure our focus is where we want it, which is on the piano. Um, the knobs on the right are the equalizer, which is treble amount, mid, with the frequency selection for the mid amount, and the bass amount. So if we put them all to zero, it should not be uh, having much effect on our sound at all. You can see where zero is as you turn the knob. Right here, it'll tell you where you are. And if we set it to zero, blah, 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 it's so close, so close. There it is. It's not really doing much to our sound at all, hopefully. But if we turn it on and start to turn the knobs, we get more bass. to and then you can do the same thing with the treble we can actually just turn it on and off so I tend to not use the EQ very much I usually leave that to the sound guy to or gal to manage how it sounds outside in the house um, but the amp simulation is kind of fun. Uh, we have three options, a JC, a small, or a twin, uh, modeling some pretty iconic guitar amps. Most commonly, you're going to use that on an electric piano. Um, and well, here, here's that without. So it's a, it's a pretty subtle difference. Um, and then we've got our drive, which is similar to the drive on the Leslie rotary speaker, but independent, um, for when it's time to rock. So I find myself using the effects most often on electric pianos and synths. So uh, very commonly with an electric piano, I will do what we did a second ago with chorus and tremolo and maybe a little bit of drive and some uh, amp sim. That's a little bit too much tremolo, so I'm focused on effect one. Just back the tremolo off a little bit. So you can hear just how much motion and interest that those effects are having as I let it ring out. It's not just, as opposed to, right? Now you can also, you can also cheat, which cheating is okay sometimes, right? Uh, in this instance, yes. Uh, with delay to make it sound like you're doing more. I'm going to do a little bit less, a little bit slower. If I take a, off the sustain pedal, it just adds a little bit of a tail. That kind of has a similar effect to what we did with the pad before with the release being turned up to kind of fuzz together the two chords. To blur those lines a little bit.
There's two more effects over here on the right. These are global effects. So these are separate. That, that's why they're separate from these four sections is they apply to everything coming out of the keyboard. There's a compressor, which I don't ever turn on, but you can. It just compresses your sound. You turn it on with this, and it compresses more as you turn it up. It has an active light so you can see the, when the compression is actually happening. It's happening there. It's pretty dramatic. And we back it off. It doesn't happen until we really dig in. And then there's reverb. Uh, you can leave this on all the time. Reverb is great. Um, there's six different types and how much you want. And if we just go real dramatic all the way to 10 on hall one, that's what it sounds like. And three to five is usually a pretty good spot. And really, I use stage one and hall one a lot, but it's a pretty subtle difference between the six types. Here's stage one. Actually, the delay is a little confusing. It's just, you know, it's reverb. Turn it back off. That's the effects. All right, so let's make some sounds. Uh, I'm just going to get us back to just a basic piano. And let's put a pad on it. Put a bird on it. Um, this is our default. That's not our default. That's what we were using before because we're in live mode. All right, so we've got, we've got the pad from before with the sine wave and the arpeggiator happening. That's pretty good. I think I'm going to back off the low frequency oscillator a little bit and the volume of the pad a little bit. And I think I'm going to slow down the attack a little just to make it a little... a little more washy. And then I'm going to put some reverb on everything just to help open it up a little more. So what I'm doing right now is kind of seeing how the sound reacts playing and how it sounds across the range of the keyboard. And it's doing pretty well. Nothing, nothing standing out in terms of, to my ear at least, in terms of muddiness or harshness on the top end. But if we did, seems to be reacting fast enough for if if we've got those quicker chord movements coming along some pad sounds don't work super well with that but this seems to be it just it just doesn't really sing until you land on a chord and let it let it come through um so with a, with a sound like this, that's just something to think about uh, in how it's going to be played. You can still just play your regular piano part, whatever it's going to be. And the pad's there, but really subtle until you kind of land and let it come out. And we can also bring the pad out more with some of these controls. Like if we bring the, the cutoff frequency up a little bit, come out a little more. We can also affect the volume, but I don't think we need to yet. Yeah, 
yeah so there's that I had that B flat still hanging through going to the B there's a little bit of a, a fuzz between those two but I would allow it I'm not crazy about that high end right now I might back this off a little more but to me the sweet spots right here with the pad And if we go back to our piano section, we could even, depending on the song and the setting, um, we can soften it up a little bit by maybe go pull up the Wurlitzer on Electric Piano 2. Now, if we're in a band setting, we're playing a song with uh, with a full band, it might be a little much on the low end with the bass player. So we can keep everything we have here and introduce a split, uh, which is all the way up here now. We need to move that. If we put it with holding shift two, bring it down to, I put it right here. We can shift our piano section to be still across the whole keyboard but we put our synth it just defaulted to the top section so now the pad is not happening below this key so now if we whatever song we're playing Not, it's not really pushing through that low end from the synth, which might be better for whatever situation we're in. Alternatively, you could introduce a third split, and it defaulted to up here, and then I think that's a good spot for it. And now our synth is only in the middle section. The synth isn't up there. So now we got our nice padding in the middle, lets us access these keys without the synth really taking over on that high end like it might. Um, so with pads, we want to introduce interest and motion to keep it interesting and moving. Um, and there's a lot of options for that. A lot of our options are in the synth section. We also have the effects section. And don't forget about our Leslie as well. So I'm going to try that right now. I'm going to turn off the piano section we have our pad and our Leslie we turn it on it defaults to the organ we can move it by double tapping to the synth so now we've got our Leslie on our pad and we can bring our piano back yeah note our, our sustain pedal is still mapped to make the Leslie fast while it's down so So the fast Leslie to me is a little aggressive. I might just back off the volume a little bit. So it's more of a more of a shimmer in the background. And we could even bring back our aftertouch to give us a little more pad volume when we push. Part of my adopted philosophy of 
something like strings is I would much rather do a synth string-like thing than strings. Because when you're trying to imitate strings, I mean, we're all aware that it's not real strings. But what we're trying to do when we play strings is get as close as we can to that. Whereas if we use a synth, that kind of frees us up to, if, if it's the same vibe even, that frees us up to be a little more creative with what it can be. Because um, I, I feel, at least when I pull up a string sound, I feel very obligated to leave it right. and not take it farther away from where it is. But So let's see what we've got. Let's I'm gonna get rid of the splits, get rid of the mappings. All right, so so something more stringy. Um, I'm gonna go into the sample section. Um, this sample right here. Oh, we still got the arpeggiator on. Oh, turn off the there. So this synth uh, is aptly titled Synth Pad Two in the sample section. Um, you know what, I'm going to initialize this sound just so we're starting from square one. Um, I'm going to leave that reverb on. So sample 74 here. A little harsh, I'll back off the cutoff. I think I want a slower attack. Oh, something to know, I, I, when you pull up a sample it doesn't necessarily uh, reset all. It doesn't reset all the settings to where the knobs currently are set. So the, the settings are just kind of saved where they were, and when you move the knob, it will snap that setting to the knob's current position. Um, so I don't know where the attack was before, but I kind of want a slower, slower attack. So I'm going to try that. I want a little more release so that there's a little more wash between the chords. Maybe a little more. Make sure it decays all the way up and just I'll back this off a little bit. Back back a hair. So this sample you can hear has a little bit of motion, but I think we can help it out a little bit. Um, let's turn on some unison. I'm just listening to see which one I like the best. I think multi one was my favorite for right now in this moment. Okay with the range of this. Highs aren't too harsh. I probably, depending on the setting that this is going to be used in, I might even add a little bit of bass on the bottom of it just to beef it up a little. Now, if that's gonna if that's gonna kind of carry our sound, we can bring a piano in. Still a little, a little much, and that you know what? Now that I, I know I added bass to it, but I think 
with the piano in there, I think I want to just have the pad on the top half. So I added a split, and with Shift-2, I moved the split point to this dot, and it looks like our piano's across the full range, and our synth is just on the top half. That's exactly what I want. You know what, I think I want the split point here instead. So I think for interest this time, I'm going to introduce a little delay on the piano, because I like that. It's not bad to start. I think I want a little more. try something. I think I want the synth down an octave, but still starting on this range. So I like it down the octave. The, the thing to think about then, though, is that it's going to be really warm overall with, with that meat, because the synth is sounding right down here. So take it or leave it down an octave. Uh, if we bring it back up, I think it, it adds a nice kind of shine up here when you play. long it takes me to get tired of that sound. <laughs> it's about there. It's a pretty good length. <laughs> so I don't know if it needs much more interest on the synth pad. I think it's a pretty good spot. Um, I may add some chorus to it. I'll see if I like that better enough to keep it. Take the piano off for a second. Go back to chorus one. Verses. It's a little more. I'd, I'd leave it on there. So let's get a really great piano sound going. Um, Turn off those effects, turn off the split, turn off the synth. Okay, we're just back to piano. So one fun thing that I like to do is I, I love delay on the piano like we just had with the previous sound. But like a lot of delay. Maybe not that much delay. Um, now what we can do Let's do it. So we have the, these two buttons right up front here, slot A and slot B. Slot A is everything you are looking at on the keyboard. Slot B is everything you are looking at on the keyboard again. Now, slot A and slot B are really handy because you can quickly switch between two different sounds. Say you want to have slot A on the verses, slot B on the chorus. That makes it a really easy 
quick switch back and forth. But you can also do both at the same time. If you hold one and press the other, they're both now active, and the flashing one is the one you're looking at. So you can go back and forth and tweak them independently. Uh, so now we're looking at A, but they're both still active. So this is handy when you want two different piano sounds, or two different organ sounds, or two different synth sounds happening at the same time. Um, so if we do slot A with this grand piano, well, I'm going to turn off slot B, so we just got, we've got that. Slot B, just whatever happens to be here, is a very quiet synth. But we'll get rid of that, and we'll bring back another piano. So now we have piano, piano, same ones. But slot B, what I'm going to do is put delay on slot B. That's, all right, that's, that's, I'm okay with that amount of delay. But now we bring back slot, oh, no, still on slot B. We're going to do a split. So now this piano shift to the upper half is only from here up. I'm actually I'm going to move that up a little more. So the split point is here, and slot B's piano with the delay is there. And there's nothing on slot B down here. But when we activate slot A, we get our piano back. So we only have, effectively, delay on these top three octaves. So we also can just turn slot B down a little bit, just turn that piano down. So that allows us to still play on this bottom range of the piano without getting so muddy with all of that epic delay happening, and we still get that sparkle, that uh, shine of, from all of that delay on the top end. Now we can go a step further, go back to slot B with our delay, and change the sound. Just make it a electric piano now. So now that delay is a little softer. It's not quite as cutty as the piano was. So. Now, something else we can do with the delay, we're looking at slot B. I'm going to disable slot A right now, same way as we enabled it. So now we're just looking at slot B. We've got our delay, but we also have that first key strike and the delay. But if we turn the amount all the way up, we only get the delay. Now, if we leave it like that, and re-enable our piano on slot A. It doesn't, what was happening before is, I don't know if you could hear it, we, from, in this whole range, every key press was a stacked piano and electric piano at the same time, and I just wanted the delay. So I'm gonna actually change it to the Wurlitzer on electric piano two. And I'm going to increase the feedback a bit. I'll back it up a hair. Um, we can also, the tap tempo button on the delay, if we hit, if we press shift when we press that, it turns on the ping pong light, which sends the delay left, right, left, right, left, right, or I don't know which one's first, but it's alternating between the two sides. So now we have.
kind of still want, I want more of that delay coming through. I'm going to turn that back up a little more. Now what I want is it lasting longer, which means I'm going to slow down the tempo on the delay. That's what I'm going to do. So now it's going to last longer. Yeah. That's, I like that, but I'm going to back the volume off a little more. We can also still go even farther with our slot B electric piano and take it up an octave. Now we're plus one, so now that delay has been taken up an octave. It makes it sound like a nice little echo up here from what you're doing really close on the keyboard. I might, after that change, I think I might back the vol volume off even a little more. Because since it's an, oct an octave higher, it's just cutting a little more. I, I want it to be a little more subtle than that. I just played that. The only note I pressed in that upper range was this one right there, but it's adding a nice, almost like a high drone, thanks to that delay that's up an octave. So that's a fun little trick we can do. Um, I think it's more effective when the piano is more exposed. So like full band, you know, rocking out, you're probably not going to be doing that. But if you've got the responsibility of filling the musical space all by yourself or maybe with just a you know one singer or a guitar or something it's a, it's a really nice effect uh switching sounds verse to chorus um between slot a and slot b is effective because it does not cut off the sound that you're playing when you switch. But if you switch presets to a different program, then it will cut off the sound. The newer Nord Stage 3 will do the soft transitions and let you, let you hold your chords. So um, if we keep slot A and slot B, so if we're gonna switch from like a piano to an organ, we got piano and slot A, slot B will turn on our organ, turn off this piano here, and we'll just go to that drawbar setting and make sure our Leslie is on. Uh, that's why our Leslie is still on the synth, so we will assign it back to the organ. There it is. So, I don't know, I'm gonna do a different key now, A flat. There's a lot of church songs in A flat, right? <laughs> So I was able to switch to that organ. Granted, that didn't feel like a verse into a chorus, but but the, you heard the piano keep ringing. So my my foot was still on the sustain pedal when I switched to panel to slot B, and vice versa. If my if I switch to slot A while still holding, the the organ is still there and. And so like the, the sustain pedal, everything's still acting like it should. The sustain pedal is still turning the Leslie on and off, even though I'm looking at slot A and it's piano on every new key that I press. But if I lift this hand up, it's back to piano because we're on slot A now.
There's your verse in the chorus, or vice versa. Yeah. Um, or you could even you could even do you could even leave the piano on and just add organ for the change. I messed that up. So yeah, the, that's a great use of slot A and slot B is switching sections in a song because it doesn't cut off the sound that you have going. On each section underneath the octave shift buttons, there is a P stick and sus head uh, lights and labels. And those are for the pitch stick and the sustain pedal. Uh, if you press shift while pressing this button, you can turn on or off those features. So right now the sustain pedal is off on the piano. Foot is on the pedal, no sustain. Foot is on the pedal, sustain. Also the pitch stick. Now, if you want that. And now both, but back to sustain pedal. So that can be used to turn on or off the sustain pedal on the organ as well, same way, or on the synth. If you don't want your synth to sustain, but you have like an electric piano that you do want to sustain, you have control over that right there. Yeah. Of course you do. 